Today I went to the ODU Open House for Physics slash the Graduate Admitted Students Day. I'm going to post a video of the event tomorrow, but towards the end of the event I went to volunteer to help uh, SPS with what they were doing at the Open House. And uh, what we had was we had a bunch of tables set up and each table corresponded to a class that you take as a physics major. And I got a lot of questions from people who would come into the room and I thought in this video I would discuss some of the questions that people were asking uh, because those aren't featured in the video tomorrow. Now all of these questions were by prospective physics majors that might be coming to ODU so I figured that might extend towards some of the people that watch these videos in the first place. The first question had to do with where to place your math courses with respect to your physics classes. There's no set schedule that says you have to take linear at a certain time, calc 3 at another time, and so on. So Corey helped me answer this uh, a lot, and the, the answer that we came up with was that if you can, you should take calc 1 before taking your first university physics class. That way when you take university physics 1, which is Newtonian mechanics, uh, you'll be in calc 2. Now, university physics 1, though it's calculus based, there's really not too much calculus to it. You learn how to take the limit as h goes to zero and describe uh, rates of change inst instantaneously. Um, but where this starts to benefit you is once you get to University Physics 2. Now, when you get to University Physics 2, I believe Calc 2 is at least a co-requisite. Um, but the thing is, is University Physics 2 has to do with electricity and magnetism. That means that you're going to learn a bit about Maxwell's equations. So if you can be in Calc 3 at the time that you take your second University Physics class, this puts you in a much better position to understand the math that you're going to be using to solve these physics problems. If you're familiar with concepts like Stokes Theorem and Divergence Theorem while you're in University Physics, it can really help you appreciate Maxwell's equations a lot more. Now, if you're in your university physics class too, uh, you might as well, if you can, also be in differential equations. Differential equations and multivariable calculus can cross over sometimes in the same course when you start talking about exact differentials that uh, they typically introduce your partial derivatives and things like that in differential equations. Um, so, being familiar with both Calc 3 and differential equations at the same time I think is a good idea. Not to mention getting differential equations knocked out before you take your first classical mechanics class also puts you in a great position for classical mechanics. Classical mechanics is the first physics class that is very heavy in needing to know differential equations and electrodynamics, your first uh, course in e &M, is very heavy in multivariable calculus, Calc 3. So if you can get Calc 3 and differential equations knocked out before you leave University Physics 2, or I guess at the same time you leave that course, that puts you in a very good position for the rest of physics. Now your next semester you might be taking things like modern physics, maybe e &M or whatever. One thing that you're not going to be taking your next semester is quantum. So in that gap between your University Physics and your quantum mechanics, you're going to want to take a course in linear algebra. It really helps me picture what's going on with the Schrodinger equation when I look at it as an eigenvector eigenvalue problem, and that's something you can't really understand until you have a course in linear algebra. Gaining that comfortability with different vector spaces and things like that is absolutely essential when it comes to quantum mechanics. Any other math classes like partial differential equations or complex variables is just icing on the cake, but I really thought mentioning that taking Calc 1 before you take your first university physics class and then proceeding from there just puts you in a great position, if possible, if your schedule allows it. Another question that we got was, how do you decide what research internships to pursue? That way you can find out what field of study you want to specialize in if you want to go to graduate school. Now this was a great question, but there's a different way to go about doing this that I think is more practical. And what I mean by that is if, you're, if you've already decided on being a physics major, okay, you're going to take your university physics, you're going to take your E&M and your uh, classical mechanics, there's going to be some modern physics class that you have to take. Generally speaking, modern physics goes over two things, special relativity and quantum mechanics. Then sprinkled in throughout those subjects, you'll talk about special topics courses. You're going to talk about solid state, you're going to talk about statistical physics, 
I'm going to talk about nuclear, atomic, all that good stuff. This is when I started to learn what sounded interesting to me. So it planted the seed on what I wanted to pursue for internships, research internships, were the things I found interesting that I was first exposed to in modern physics. Now modern physics is extremely surface level when it comes to these specialty courses, but at least it gives you a rough idea on A, what questions there are to ask, and B, sort of how they go about solving them. Not to mention just having a conversation with your advisor or different people, different faculty members within uh, your department, it really does go a long way because if there's anything a physicist likes talking about, it's their field of research. So they'll be able to, if you talk to a nuclear physicist, they'll tell you exactly all the options you could do with that. And the same thing goes for all the other specialties. Now the last good question that I got kind of goes hand in hand with the first one. And what it was, was at a certain point in your undergraduate, once you get to your upper level physics classes, is it okay to have any weak points with your math? And my answer to that is absolutely. And I know that sounds really weird, but what I mean by that is um, I think I learned more linear algebra in my quantum mechanics class than I did when I took linear algebra. When I took a lot of these math classes, I got really good at going through the motions. So I got really good at taking that class. Uh, but when it came to applying it and really picturing what I was doing, I didn't really know. And that was a weak point of mine, being able to associate the abstract math with something tangible and meaning, meaningful, physical, whatever you want to call it. So for me, I had a really hard time giving a shit about doing math, starting with some assumption, and letting the logic take you to different conclusions, just for the sake of following the logic. And the great thing about learning math through the physics department is that it's always tethered to something physical. It's always tethered to something that you can say, by the way, that explains this. So a lot of the weak points that I might have had in Calc 3 or linear algebra, partial differential equations, whatever, those were kind of filled in once I got to see and put to work. They're not gonna fill themselves in if that's not a goal of yours to do in the first place, but I think that's pretty obvious. But those are just three questions that I thought were good questions, and since people who were potential physics majors had them, I thought it was worth bringing up in a video. Also, I just didn't feel like editing today's video today because I'm really tired. So that one will be up tomorrow. Hope you guys found this video helpful or at least a little bit interesting. Let me know in the comment section if you did. I'll see you guys there.